Emis users, you probably know that QRISC is a little bit shaky right now and wondering what on earth you can do to fix this solution and to make your lives and especially your patients' lives a lot easier when it comes to assessing their risk for cardiovascular issues. Well, in this episode, we're going to show you the fix that hopefully makes that so much easier for you and your patients. Let's take enhance your primary care and learning. Hey, GP learners, and welcome to this episode where I'm joined by Dustin Saint from Primary Care IT. How are we doing there, Dustin? Yeah, good, thanks, Candy. You? Yeah, ticking on. Now, I know many people out there are concerned about this whole change that's happened with EMIS and QRISC, and it's causing a little bit of panic out there and stuff. Can you just briefly give us a summary as to what on earth has happened? Yeah, so it's a it's a complex situation. Essentially, EMIS have notified users that QRISC two is going to be pulled from their system by the end of by the end of March. Some some of the tools have already come out, so the bulk calculations have already come out, um, and the other tools are notified to come out. Um, it's an ever changing situation, and there's still a lot of uncertainty about it. And some of the later communication from Emus has suggested that it may or may not come out. Um, so it's 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 related to the fact that QRIS two is built on um, read concepts rather than SNOMED concepts. Those are the codes that sit underneath everything that we do within the clinical system. Um, mm -hmm. And basically, the further away we get from using read, which is now several years ago, then the less accurate those risk predictors become. Um, and QRISC-3 has all of the, the coding based on SNOMED codes um, and so is completely accurate. And that's kind of what's been driving the kind of the, the question about, about QRISC-2 being within EMIS. Okay, so we're hearing that obviously the QS2 may not be part of EMIS permanently, and obviously QS3 then has a bit of an issue in terms of its longer term use and stuff, um, particularly for practices to use it effectively. So I hear that you've got a fix for this. Yeah, so so being the people that we are, um, and the people that we, <laughs> that we that we are, kind of, and the people that we know. We, as soon as we heard that this was that this was an issue, we um, we reached out to people that we know and said, and particularly um, Julia Hippersley Cox, who's the author of of Q Risk, uh, or the Q Suite of tools, and and said, is there anything we can do to to help with this? Um, and bearing in mind our experience in building uh, clinical decision support tools within clinical platforms and our one contact solution that allows us to pull and push data back into clinical systems and our analytics tools as well we thought there may be something that we could do to to kind of help with that and that was really where where conversations began so we we um had some early conversations with the team at, at clinrisk um and said and said can we do anything to help here um and 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 we with over the last few months we've gone from from can we help to actually um we can be the front end platform for the calculation of 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 q risk three um and what that means is that we can we can pull data from the clinical system and put it into um on contact so that the end user can find their patient see the data that's held within the clinical system about that patient validate that all of that is correct um and then send it off and get a q risk score back in so essentially kind of solving the problem of of q risk of q risk three calculation cool shall we have a look and see how that works so we identify our patient and we search for them. So this in, in this instance, I'm searching for Claire Anderson. I hit the green button and then it confirms the patient's details. So I can see her date of birth and her NHS number and just validate that I've got the correct patient selected. Um, it comes up with all of the contact details. These are all the things that are on PDS. And um, so that's your spine. Um, and you can validate that all of that information is correct. You can also record things like ethnicity at this stage as well. And that will pull back into the into the platform. So you can see phone number, um, email address, ethnicity, and then communication preferences that are recorded as well. Um, so hit next. That comes through to um, the QRISC calculation. Um, we can see the data that's then being pulled in from the clinical system. So this is highlighting that from EMIS Web, uh, we've got a code match, which was recorded in 2006 of Light Smoker. Um, so this is a really important thing um, if we're pulling data in from the clinical system that we know exactly what data it was entered in because it may or may not still be accurate. Um, and the way we've built this within the platform is to, is to highlight the things where there may be other considerations um, that you need to take into account. Um, hit the send button. 
and you'll get the score back again and then you can choose to send uh, that information off to the patient so this is a, a kind of form that the patient would get back and it says why am i being contacted what is a high risk of cardiovascular disease these mean um, do you remember having conversations about a statin in the past do you want to see the pros and cons of, of having a statin um, so risks and benefits there and then ask the patient how they feel about having a statin as well so the ability to kind of collect that information from the patient um, get the calculation of the score and then and then be able to collect from the patient how they feel about that particular score as well joining up that kind of loop that you need to that you need to do Cool. So it basically means that you can calculate the risk, um, show that to the patient and also give them information about how to manage that as well as both right into the records and back out as well. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. So so the data is pulled from the records for you to look at when you're doing the calculation um, so that you can then send that off and get the calculation back. And then when you get the calculation back, you can then choose how you want to communicate that calculation to the patient. So maybe you don't want to do that at all. You just want to dump it into the clinical system as, as the, the risk score. And you can do that with one button click and it drops it in. Um, it may be that you want to send the patient some information about what their risk score means for them. And again, you can do that very easily with one click um, and away you go. Awesome. And that potentially means that you don't then have to use a potential appointment if the risk is low and if the risk is high, you've got some pre-information for the patients before they come and see you. So hopefully that consultation is a bit easier and more detailed for the patient's perspective so they can make an informed decision as well. That's the plan. That's the plan. <laughs> so and roadmap. Awesome. And roadmap for this is to have bulk calculations, um, the ability to do bulk calculations within the platform as well. Um, so you'd be able to bulk calculate against your against your cohorts of chosen patients, Q risk three and Q diabetes. And in fact, all of the other Q tools will be internalized within the platform over the over the next little while. Mm hmm. And I know a lot of this is backed up on your one contact platform and stuff that provides all of this. And and this is part of the one contact platform. So people have that, they have access to this as well. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely right. Yeah, absolutely right. So it's part of the one contact platform. Um, and if you've already got one contact within your practice, this will be as part of that as well. Um, if you haven't um, and you're interested in it, then drop us a line and we can we can have a conversation about that. Yeah, and if you want to know more about One Contact, check out this video. It's probably going to come up at some point soon. Uh, if not, there's another one here for you from previously where we talked about it in great detail. And as always, we're here to help tech enhance your primary care and learning. We'll catch you in those next episodes.